Welcome to our Lunchtime Live program on WJEJ. We're here the third Thursday each month, a partnership with Washington County Public Schools. This is Will Kaufman from the Public Information Office. Today's show is sponsored by Hagerstown Honda, one of the primary sponsors of the Teacher of the Year program, which is what we'll focus on during our show today. Uh, and today's show is sponsored by Blackboard on a mission to reimagine education. We focus on the Teacher of the Year with the Teacher of the Year, Kyle Dingle. Congratulations. Welcome to the show, Kyle. Thank you very much. Good to be here. Um, tell me about, let's let's talk about that evening. Just, just the... Uh, D- describe the scene, the the build up, the announcements. The uh, j- just describe the scene for anybody who hasn't attended the event. Yeah, for for those of you who haven't been to the Teacher of the Year banquet, it's a wonderful night just to honor teachers. I was uh, lucky enough to be nominated two years ago, and that was actually really nice because I wasn't a finalist, so I just got to go enjoy a nice dinner and uh, enjoy watching everybody else celebrating that night and really watching everybody else be nervous. Uh, This time, it was my turn. As a finalist, I was uh, a bit of a nervous wreck. My mom actually told me, she was like, I've never seen Kyle nervous before, and uh, he didn't look so good that night. Um, But uh, certainly a lot of anxiety and just emotions kind of welling up. And uh, obviously when they announced the winner, I was just blown away. And uh, I know that we spoke just a moment ago. When I looked at the credentials of some of the other teacher finalists, I was like, I have no chance. There's no way in a million years I could possibly win this thing. So I was elated and surprised. It, it, was, it was an amazing night. You know, it really is. It seems to me it would be an amazing feeling as an individual teacher. First of all, the set of finalists is impressive. The room is filled with impressive ed- you know, folks with impressive abilities. Uh, in, in many, many different arenas, different grade levels, all of that. You teach fifth grade at Morgansville Elementary School, and yet the range of of honorees over the years has really has been qu- quite a range. Um, and, and just the folks in the room, the nominate, the the crowd of nominations, it goes from top to bottom, grade levels, different subject areas, all of that, which is an impressive thing, I think. Oh, I absolutely agree. I I was really impressed this year that we even had a physical educator, you know, as Mm -hmm. one of our finalists. I was like, yes, because they do some amazing work. You know, I think oftentimes we think of our physical educators as, well, they just play dodgeball all day long. You know what I mean? But I've just seen some amazing things that they do to help with literacy, you know, in the classroom. Uh, It's just amazing to see what they can do. And, And so to have them be nominated as well and be a finalist was really awesome. What did you prepare? Did you prepare for the night? I mean, did you have you know, all of a sudden you express the shock and then pull out 17 pages worth of remarks. <laughs> right. <laughs> For those who know me, they know I'm a, a bit of a jokester. I definitely thought about having like a scroll that I was going to unroll yeah. and be like, okay, yeah. I'm ready. I mean, it's not a new joke, but it's a good one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, But I I had prepared a couple of thoughts. I will say to my fault, you know, uh, I had prepared a few thoughts and I made the biggest mistake of my life uh, so far being the teacher of the year, which was not thanking my dear wife that evening. And was just like, how could I have a huge oversight? Yeah, for the for the woman at home who puts up with me day in and day out, who hears me vent every day about you know being a teacher, uh, it was certainly a, a huge oversight. I hope that I've made amends after that. But uh, yeah, I, I had definitely prepared a few words in regards to what it what I believe it takes to make a great teacher, and that is support from lots and lots of different people, uh, especially my dear wife at home, who again I forgot to mention. <laughs> right, you're now going to overcompensate. For I will that, do right? my best to right. overcompensate. For you're that. playing you're right. catch up. <laughs> At this point, what I what I, actually what we want to know is that she's going to use that for an undetermined amount of time now. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You're teacher of the year, but you're not doing this for us. Yes. <laughs> Do you remember when you forgot to thank me? I'd like to uh, call yes. in a little favor right now. Yes, ma'am. You got it, baby. <laughs> what What is your What's your philosophy in in the cl- when you approach work every when you're driving into park and going into school? How are you looking at the day on the day to day? Yeah, that's a great question. I, it's funny that you say that because I think that it's changed, you know, over the years hmm. quite a bit. I, I certainly, I think, like most teachers, you feel the pressure of all of the standards that you're responsible for teaching these kids. You know, you start with me, and we have 180 days. By the end of the year, I have to make sure that you know this and you know it well. You can transfer it to other situations. And I think probably just in the past few years, I've really learned that there is uh, somebody's favorite little person in the whole wide world who's walking in the door with me that day and they have many other needs than just to learn how to multiply fractions today and and I think that probably when I'm walking in the door I just think uh, what is it that I have to offer them today you know what are the gifts and abilities that I have that they need today and so a lot of students are walking in who who might not have a mom and dad at home who are loving on them and they might just need a hug to start their day 
Uh, and, and so I think that that's probably, again, how my mentality has changed. I think that all of my students are uh, made differently, uniquely. They all vary in their ability levels and how they like to learn. And I just try to do the best that I can in approaching instruction in the classroom to meet all of those diverse needs. How many kids do you have? Uh, right now I have 22. Right. Um, and that range has to be... Uh has to be pretty broad, I would think. Absolutely. How much of a challenge, well, tell us about fifth grade. Mm -hmm. Many of us and many folks listening, I'm sure, it's been a while since we experienced <laughs> Are you smarter than a fifth grader? Fifth that's grade. our experience with that, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. You know, fifth grade is certainly a challenge. When I say multiplying fractions, there are, uh, actually, it was funny, I was scrolling on Facebook yesterday, and you know every once in a while somebody posts a math problem for everybody to try to <laughs> right. solve. And there was one that I'm like, this is a fifth grade standard. It was, it was dividing with huh. fractions, a whole number divided by a fraction. And the comments are all of these incredible arguments of, you know, mathematicians that think they right. know how to solve the problem. And I'm like, my fifth graders could do this, man. Hmm. Uh, but that's a challenging, challenging concept for them to learn. When you really think about trying to visualize, model, make concrete the idea of dividing with a fraction, multiplying with a fraction, that's, that's difficult. You know, so I, I focus primarily on math and science. I'm, I'm one of the STEM teachers at, hmm. at Mogginsville. Mm -hmm. And so that's my uh, more area of expertise, I would say. So it's a huge challenge. You know, probably a larger challenge for us in fifth grade, you really think about this big transition to middle school. Just this morning we had uh, the different middle schools that Mogginsville uh, goes into would be Western Heights, Northern Middle, and Clear Spring. They came over to visit, just kind of help students with making that transition, oh, yeah. what to expect. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of differences, if you guys can remember whenever we made the, the move over to middle school. Right. That's a, a really important time, I think, in kids' lives, you know, as they're changing and new friends. And it's, it's something that definitely produces anxiety. But fifth grade definitely has some challenging standards that we have to deal with, along with, I think, a lot of other emotional things. You know, boys and girls are starting to think right. about boys and girls in a different way. Right. Uh, and so a lot, of, a lot of challenges, I would say, in fifth grade. We, there's been more of a focus, particularly at the upper grade levels, but I think it's worked its way down um, and directed to be worked the whole way down through a school system, especially here, where the focus has been on preparing kids for for not only the next grade level and the next, you know, the next school, the, 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 the series of moves they're going to have to make within a school system, but also preparing them for, you know, future, future endeavors, whether it's college, careers, or, or both. Sure. How much does that come into play in fifth grade? Well, I'll say in my classroom, a lot. You know, when we mm. really think about being college and career ready, I know for my math and science standards, I, I hate boring a kid with uh, lessons that we're engaging in. And so I always like to approach whatever it is that we're learning, whatever the standard is, with the why behind it. Why right. is this important for me to know? When am I actually going to see this in real life? So, so many times, if you would walk into my classroom, you'll see some kind of a project or something I've done at home, and I think to myself, this is where we engage with fractions in real life. So okay. I want to bring that into the classroom so that students can actually see that and see where this is going to be important to them somewhere down the line. Now, I will say there are definitely still some kids who are like, Mr. Dingle, I don't really care about how to figure out the square footage of my floor so I can put in carpet. They, they really don't, right. <laughs> you know, right. they're not buying into that yet. But hopefully they're seeing the real world connection, you know, and that down the line, they're going to need these skills to be successful. Uh, you're listening to Lunchtime Live. This is Will Kaufman with Kyle Dingle, our Teacher of the Year in Washington County Public Schools from Morgansville Elementary School. Today's show is sponsored by Hagerstown Honda, one of the primary sponsors of the Teacher of the Year program here in the county. Uh, and today's show is sponsored by Blackboard on a mission to reimagine education. Talk a little bit about your background. A and because this is a much harder nose show than probably you expected, we've done a little investigative reporting uh, admittedly because of your own hand, which I thought foolish that you actually posted public information about your checkered start to your school career as a student. Didn't even, <laughs> didn't want to get on the bus, yeah. you know, begrudgingly actually went to school when they finally sure. forced you into it. Yeah, thanks. Boy, for, you've come a long way. Yeah, thank you so much for mentioning that. I appreciate you bringing that up. <laughs> yes. uh, no, but I, I'm a, a local boy. I, I grew up in Cascade uh, with my awesome family and went to Cascade Elementary. But the story behind that is really one of, I think, uh, just community, you know, right. in, in Cascade. I wanted you to do the good part of the yes, story. Yes, thank you, thank yeah. you. <laughs> uh, but my first day of kindergarten, I can remember, you know, Mama buying me my He-Man backpack and I was ready to roll. But when that bus came up, I was just like, I can't, I can't do right. it, you know, sure. uh, too much anxiety. So 
uh, a friend who was also a teacher, Nancy Kirkpatrick, and she's still up in Cascade. Mm -hmm. Really, really great friend, even to this day. Uh, she got on that school bus and rolled it, rolled up the next day. And so I saw her little face in the window. and was like, okay, I think I can do this, you know? <laughs> right. That was one of the things I said in my acceptance speech of teacher, teacher of the Year. I really think it takes a village to raise a child. It takes a village to make a really great teacher. You know, I can just think of so many people along the way who have helped me. You know, I was staring out as I was giving my speech, uh, speech and there was my high school principal. And I was like, Hey, Mr. Stauffer, how are you today? It's good to see you again, yeah. not in your office. <laughs> you know, that was yeah. only once, okay? Not a big deal. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And we don't have to do that story yeah. <laughs> today. That's for another time. Yeah, but, you know, uh, growing up in, in Cascade was fantastic. We ended up filtering down then into Smithsburg Middle and Smithsburg mm -hmm. High School. And, and I mentioned uh, in the Herald Mail article that they uh, were able to put forward that Mr. Witt was one of my favorite mm. teachers. You know, I had him for AP physics, but regular physics and then AP physics to follow that. And he was a guy who was like, you know, folks, you guys are the ones who are probably a little bit more suited for math and science. You know, you, you're just kind of geared for that. And so he's like computer science, engineering. I think really he was like, those are the ones that are going to get you more money. So that's the route that you want to go, okay? Don't be a teacher like me. Go do right. computer science and engineering. Right. And I thought to myself, well, I, I like technology. You know, maybe I'll think about this computer science route. Well, I went to HCC for two years. My mom actually was a, um, a teacher there, and so I got free tuition if I passed all my classes. So HCC was the way to go for me. But uh, I, I took a C++ programming class, and I barely squeaked through that thing. And, and it was then I was like, well, this is definitely not for me. I can tell you that. I'm not going to be a computer science guy, that's for sure. So God bless all of you programmers out there. I, I have a much greater appreciation for what you do. Right. But about that time, you know, I started to think about maybe teaching is the route. And actually, mm -hmm. a, another family friend who was a professor there, she, whenever I said, you know, I, I'm thinking about being a teacher. She's like, well, it's about time, you know, oh, as no, if she yeah. had known forever yeah, yeah, exactly. that that's, of course, right. what I was going to do. Right. Yeah, so after that, I, was, uh, I went to Towson University mm -hmm. and graduated from there. And then, actually, I have a fun story about that. I graduated in May of 2005 and uh, married my sweet wife in June. And then realized I probably put the cart before the horse and should have had a job first. And so then I just started praying for a job. And I got hired at, at Mogginsville Elementary uh, August of 2005. And it was actually back to school night was the day that I was hired. Hmm. And so I went in, signed my paperwork, and then I drove over to Mogginsville. I pushed a few desks around, put a couple posters on the wall that were graciously given to me by other teachers in the building. Uh -huh. Uh, and then I went home, got a shower. For those who remember the old Mogginsville Elementary, there's no air conditioning, so I was sweating like crazy. <laughs> yeah. Went home, grabbed a shower, put a tie on, and went to meet some parents and tried to convince them I knew what I was doing, you know, as a first-year that, teacher. That is a, <laughs> an inauspicious start to a career, if I might say so. <laughs> that, that's, there's been enough time. What's the difference from then to now? Uh, when you look at when you look at that that span of years, mm -hmm. how, how have you grown as a teacher, as a you know a a, a, per, a fellow staff member, a fellow sure. employee with the rest of your staff, you know, with the parents? How has that? evolved. Yeah, if, if I could give a shout out to any first, second, third year teachers, you know, we all know that that was just kind of survival mode time. I, I can remember, you know, Hoot and Mifflin was the, the tool that we were using to do a lot of our language arts work. And I just remember I was rolling through these lessons, trying to keep up with my scope and sequence, what I was supposed to be teaching. And, you know, the other teachers would be like, yeah, did you uh, do this grammar lesson? I was like, uh, no, I didn't know I was supposed to, but I will start tomorrow. I will definitely yeah. do that. You know, so I, I think from starting with, I have no idea really what I'm doing. Just mm -hmm. tell me and I, I'll do it and I'll do right. it to the best of my ability to now. I feel like, you know, probably within these last few years, and, and this is where I, I would give as many compliments as possible to Donna Newcomer, our principal. I think that she does a really good job of fostering leadership with teachers. Mm -hmm. And so I think that my confidence has grown. You know, probably, uh, you know, five years in, I, I started to kind of feel a little bit more confident in my ability, had my teacher tool belt on, you know, I knew yep. kind of my tricks that I used in the classroom that worked well for me. But just I think in the past few years when, when Donna asked me to, to kind of step into some leadership roles and committees and things at mm -hmm. school, and then she nominated me two years ago for the Teacher of the Year program. And again, I wasn't a finalist, but that was a really nice night to just, like you sure. said, of that evening, just feeling like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing okay. Yeah, I belong <laughs> you know? here. Yeah, I, I feel like, you know, maybe I am doing a pretty good job at this teaching thing. You know, I think from that, you know, again, just building that confidence and feeling like maybe I could step into some leadership roles and maybe I could help, you know, some other teachers to grow. You know, people have asked me now that I'm the teacher of the year, you know, have you thought about doing something outside the classroom? And I'm like, 
Not really. You know, I really like being a teacher. I, I'd like to stay here, you know, for a while. The only other thing that, that has really been enticing to me is maybe thinking about mentoring other teachers. You know, we wow. have the teacher mentoring program here, which I think is invaluable. You know, for first year wow. teachers that feel like, so many times I hear stories of, of girls and boys that are starting this thing off and just crying, like, am I, I don't know what I'm doing in right. here. Is this right? This right. happened today. What in the world am I doing? Did I make the right choice with right. my life, you know? I would love to be the guy who can come aside, beside them and say, yes, teaching is really, really hard and it takes a lot of work, but trust me, you're doing the right thing, you know, and just helping them along the way to make that a little less daunting. What, what mistakes can you remember in general in the starting couple of years of your career that, you know, things that you now, things that you worked out of your tool belt, th things that just didn't work and, and you're, you know, you're sharper, you're more efficient, you're more effective now. Sure. What were some of those things? You know, probably I would say the biggest model. Most of us who, you know, are um, outside of the classroom now, you know, we've managed to graduate somehow. Uh, if we looked back at our time in education, most of us would probably remember a teacher standing in the front of the room, all of us sitting at a desk and, and being quiet so you didn't get in trouble, you know. And so probably when I started out my career, there was a lot more of me talking and students listening and, and really just hoping that they were auditory learners and that they somehow were going to catch, you know, like a sponge, that they were going right. to soak up whatever it was that I was uh, giving them. And I think probably in the last few years, I've just realized so much that there's a lot of folks who don't learn that way. You know, and they could sit there and you could yabber on and you could say, you know, why don't you stay after school and I'll keep running my mouth and we'll see if you get it. Or why don't we try this again tomorrow? And none of that's going to work for them. They're going to need some kind of a different approach. So probably what I would say I have thrown out is trying to uh, talk less at them, hmm. give them more opportunities to engage in learning, you know, thinking that some students are auditory, but others may be visual, some may be kinesthetic, uh, and, and really just giving them multiple opportunities to see content or engage in content in different ways. Uh, one big thing that, that's just a kind of a no-brainer now that's in my tool belt is whenever I'm giving directions, I and mean, we've all sat in a meeting before where somebody says something and you're like, wait, I just missed that. I was, you know, <laughs> daydreaming about something else or somebody was talking to me. Uh, I don't like to assume that my students are just going to sit there and listen to me all day long. If they miss right. something, I don't I mean, want you're to... riveting, but there yeah, is thank a, you. Thank there's you a much. margin for that. Absolutely. Yeah. And, it, and it's so funny because I think as teachers, sometimes we forget that as adults, we learn that way too, or we don't learn in that particular way. And so I just like to give my students a little bit of grace in that area that, you know, I'll post those directions up on the board. So if you missed it, it's no big deal, but you have an opportunity or you have a way that you can still be engaging in the content. Uh, even if that's not how you typically learn, you know. If you're just joining us, this is Lunchtime Live on WJEJ Radio. We're here the third Thursday of the month. Uh, today's show features a special guest, Teacher of the Year in Washington County Public Schools, Kyle Dingle from Morgansville Elementary School. Today's show is sponsored by Blackboard on a mission to reimagine education and by one of the primary sponsors of the Teacher of the Year program. Uh, we thank them for their support of the radio show today, Hagerstown Honda, uh, providing you not like a 17 year old car i mean you're you're driving in pretty good uh in pretty good stead right now i'm in very good hands i, I will say of the teacher of the year banquet uh being nominated was a, a, an amazing honor being a finalist was really awesome but nerve-wracking but probably the toughest thing is when you walk up to that podium and you're supposed to give a little speech but then i have someone just hand me a set of keys and obviously we had all you know drooled over the car out front but he hands me the keys that night and then a little yellow folder He's like, everything you need to know is right here in this yellow folder. So after all the hoopla and the pictures and we're finally settling down, and I'm getting ready to leave. And I open the folder and, and it says, hey, uh, feel free to drive the car home. It's the one parked out front. And I'm like, yeah, no duh. <laughs> yes. It says, give us a call tomorrow and enjoy. And those are my three directions. And I'm just like, oh, my goodness, this is a lot of responsibility. Yes. And, and uh, I'll just tell on myself a little bit. I am not familiar with the amount of technology that is uh, available in vehicles nowadays. Right. So I didn't know how to start the car. Well, you gave I, me your vehicle history before we yes. went on the air, and it's it, 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 it was a troubling little story. Well, I, I have I so. had a great running little Cavalier. It was a 2000 Cavalier, okay. and I loved that car until it died on us about a month ago. 
And so that left, you know, my wife was driving out our other vehicle that could uh, carry all of our kids around. And then I have a big, beautiful 1991 Chevy pickup truck, <laughs> which if anybody has seen it before, it is multicolored. It is, it's supposed to be red and gray, but then one of the quarter panels had to be replaced. So that's a baby blue, which is beautiful. And then lots of rust along the wheel wells. This is way too much information for this. Is, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's a this beautiful, is, beautiful truck. taking you down. <laughs> yes. Beautiful it? truck. But yeah. that was my daily driver, you know. You, you so, actually had to win Teacher of the Year. <laughs> Just based on need. Well, that was that was my mother-in-law. She was like, I'm just praying for you to win this Teacher of the Year because you need it, Kyle. <laughs> Thank right. you, Emily. You keep praying, baby. Right. I appreciate it. Yeah, and, but anyway. And, and, and the, the, I mean, the vehicle part of it's the the – the rewards that night are, are are very very nice. I mean, some great sponsors and some great you know some great things that you acquire. There's a whole technology package. Yeah, five thousand dollar technology package, which I'm actually shopping around with some of my students right now. I've got a, a hmm. guy in my class, Bryce, who's just fantastic with technology. If I ever have a question, I'm like Bryce, can you come help me out with this? <laughs> yeah, right. You know, he's teaching That's me right. how to airdrop stuff and and connect our iPads with my laptop. He's fantastic. That's great. Uh, but I'm like, hey, Bryce, what do you think about this? You think I should get this? You know, you probably won't be around right. to see it, but do you think I should get this? He kind of gives me his take That's on funny. things. Yeah, I will say that the, the uh, car has been fantastic. You know, driving back and forth, it has been amazing. Uh, I got my photographs done at Meyerly and Lowe, which is, of course, a little daunting, I think, for anybody who's like, okay, I have to get professional right. photographs done now. I guess I'll go do that. But they were wonderful. Uh, and, and I think just everybody, all of the recognition has just been so encouraging, you know, if nothing else for the teaching profession. You know, everybody's asking like, okay, so, you know, what's your platform? What are you going to say? And I I really just want to say to everybody, you know, teaching is really tough. And there are a lot of really amazing teachers out there. And I would just love to do the best I can this year to highlight all of those efforts and what amazing teachers around our county are already doing. What's next in the actual teacher of the year? Aside from the work you're doing, in the classroom on the day to day, what 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 what's your uh, obligation to the Teacher of the Year program? Yeah, the the next biggest thing, and Sally actually did a really good job of kind of warning me of this, is once you are a County Teacher of the Year, you are thrust into the running for Maryland Teacher sure. of the Year, and so that comes with a whole nother set of essays to complete right. and professional photographs to be done and submitted in and. So I've been working through, you know, completing some of those essays, and then on May 24th, I'll head down to the Maryland State Department of Education for like a recognition luncheon, and then we'll kind of go over really all of the events that we'll be scheduled at, you know, for the the remainder of the year. And and one thing that was really encouraging, Sally, she's so sweet, our our current uh, teacher Sally or one from Tech High. She's Mm -hmm. fantastic, and she was just like, here's my number, call me if you need anything, if you have any questions, we might want to get together, and I just asked her a few questions, and she's like, it has been just a phenomenal year. You know, I think locking arms with other educators in Maryland, who are some of the best that we have, she's like, it has just been awesome. You know, being out of your classroom is a little bit of a challenge, but she said, every time I come back in, I just feel rejuvenated to do this all over again. I'm so excited for that. Well, here, this is just my opinion. You can't screw this up. You're following a couple of rock stars as, as <laughs> teachers true. of the year here that in the county. True. So, you know, you better be on your good game. Here. I'll do my best. <laughs> That's what I keep saying to everybody. Is, uh, thank you. That's very encouraging. I will do my best. I promise. <laughs> um, as, as you look ahead in, into the next year, aside from the teacher of the year, what, what's, what goals do you have in mind just in the classroom? You know, what, what has this year set you up to do when August rolls around again? Yeah, thank you. I, I feel like probably more than anything, this year has been uh, a, a real learning curve for me in regards to how I've been approaching education with my students. And I think pausing to really take the time to help teach my students things that aren't a part of the Common Core curriculum. You know, sometimes our students really just need lessons on how to speak to one another, how to get along with other folks, and being able to pause to... to take the time to do that has been something big and I really feel like you know with with this uh, I you know feel like I should be wearing a sash that says I am the teacher of the year so now I have a voice but Mm -hmm. I really want to do a better job I think in my building of just encouraging Mm -hmm. other teachers you know I've had a teammate this year who's actually making the move from second grade up to fifth and for anybody in education you know that's a big change you know a lot of different standards kids look a, a lot different at that age and just being able to encourage her along the way, what a phenomenal teacher she is that she didn't realize, you know. Right. Um, maybe now that I'm teacher of the year, that gives me maybe a little bit more weight. When I say you're doing an excellent, excellent job, I want you to know that I mean that from the bottom of my heart. And it's true. You know, I, I as the teacher of the year, I should know a little bit about this profession, you know. <laughs> how does a staff, how does a staff work together? 
you know, the, I, I, the grade levels don't really interact. You know, you have your own fifth grade team. Mm -hmm. How does that work on the day to day? Yeah, that's a great question because I will say at a, a smaller school, I think you have probably a more tight knit yeah. community. At the old Mogginsville Elementary that was about half the size of what we are now, you can see everybody right. almost every day. Where now there are certainly folks, you know, at this big, beautiful new school that we have, we've kind of got the first floor and we've got the second floor. Right. You know, the younger kids, the older kids, there are some times when I don't see teachers every day. And that's unfortunate because I work mm -hmm. with some awesome, awesome right. folks. And so we have opportunities where we do professional development together. We still have staff meetings. We still get to catch up with each other a little bit before school, after school, right. that sort of thing. But it does make it more challenging. I think you have to be more purposeful if you really want to be interacting with the, the staff in the building. Uh, what makes you as effective as you can be uh, with parents? That's, that's a key part. I, I think elementary school, may, as much as any grade level. Uh, I will say that's probably a bigger challenge for me. There are obviously some amazing amazing parents out there who want to do everything for their son or daughter and those are the ones that we're like we wish we could get you a sash for parent right. of the year thank you so much for the way that you participate in your child's education uh, and there are a lot of folks who i should say there are a lot of students who don't have that kind of support at right. home and that makes it difficult uh, so i like to do as much as i can to try to engage them in their child's mm -hmm. learning and kind of draw them in and be a part of it uh, but it can be a challenge at times. It, it certainly can. I feel like that's one area that I still uh, need some growth in it is when thinking about different ways that I can really help to partner with parents in their child's education, really to care about what's going on in the classroom. I'm going to say so long and congratulations. Uh, that It's a phenomenal story and will be over this next year. I mean, everybody we've talked to since we've been doing the show, when we've done a show devoted to the Teacher of the Year, those folks are very dynamic. They've had great, rewarding years, not only to be nominated and chosen, but then that year to follow. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing you're in for a, a, a pretty hearty set of experiences uh, over this next year. hope we have a chance to talk to you some more in that year. That would be great. That's for sure. Uh, Kyle Dingle is our Teacher of the Year in Washington County Public Schools, fifth grade at uh, Morgansville Elementary School. Today's show has been sponsored uh, by one of the primary sponsors of the Teacher of the Year program, Hagerstown Honda. We thank them, and we thank Blackboard on a mission to reimagine education. Uh, sponsoring today's Lunchtime Live program, we're here the third Thursday each month, a partnership with uh, Washington County Public Schools and WJEJ.